So in the last lesson, you got your crash course in HTML5 video. So now we're going to switch over and pull in the Video.js player, which builds upon this. And as you'll find, it's incredibly mature at this point. And in fact, it's exactly what we use here at Laracast. I think you'll like it. It gives you a custom player. It's entirely themable or customizable. There's a good API you can use. I think you're really going to like it. All right, so let's see how we can get this set up. To start, let's work with the CDN. Okay, so we're going to pull in two files, the video.js styling and then the video.js player. So why don't we just steal these right now? I'll put this at the bottom of the page and then this one within my head, of course. Okay, so with that alone, if I go back to Chrome and we load our site, we're still not going to see anything. It looks like it hasn't hooked in just yet. And it hasn't. We have to use a class to tell video.js where our player is and where we want it to be activated. So we come back. I'll give this a class of video.js. That's just the, the necessary styling uh, to make the player look like you'd expect. And then I will also add a data setup attribute here, and we can default that to an empty object. So this is where, uh, if you're using this form, there's actually two different forms that you could load the video. But if you're using this form, you could pass through any custom options you want here. Nonetheless, even if you don't pass anything, it's going to expect this in order to set up the video uh, on the page load. So if I give this a refresh now and open Chrome DevTools, it's going to look a little different. So it's going to set up the video to work no matter what. Even if the user is on some old browser, this is going to make it work no matter what. On any mobile device, on old browsers, it's all good. So now let's add the controls back on, give it a refresh, and there you go. You can see we have unique styling here, and now we're using the Video.js player, and I think that looks a little bit nicer. Now, as some people, um, this was the case for me, you may want the player button right in the middle. So if you want to do that, you just apply a class, VJS big play centered. All right, come back and refresh, and now you get a big play button in the middle. So here's how I like to format this stuff, because your video tag is going to have a lot of attributes. So I'd like to put each one on its own line, and then I even do, this is kind of funky, but I still do it to keep the, the indentation looking right to me. Otherwise this, I don't know, that always looks weird to me. Next, for the, for the fallback, it's recommended that you replace it with something like this. So this is what the user would see on the condition that they're in an old browser and JavaScript is disabled. Well, Video.js can't help us at that point, so they will see this message instead. Now, here's the cool thing. Like I said about styling, there are tons of existing themes on the web. I believe they even have somewhere here a, um, yeah, a customized section. Yeah, there's a skin designer here where you can tweak this however you want, which is cool. But we aren't worried about that just yet. If I do click on this, though, you can see, well, let's go ahead and play the video, pause it, and if we click on the button, yeah, this is just basic styling at this point. So if I wanted to say color is red, well, now I can control every piece of this. It's not a Swift object. It's simple HTML and CSS. Now, let's cover one more thing uh, before we wrap up. Let's give this an ID of my video. Now, what you'll find here is that because we pulled in video.js, you also have a video.js global function that you can reference anywhere. So for example, I could say var video equals video.js, and then I pass in our ID here. Now, what you'll find here is that because we pulled in video.js, you also get a global video.js function out of the box. So that means, for example, if we reference our ID, yeah, you're going to get a player instance in response. So why don't we uh, store that within a variable? And now, you know what? You already know some of the API, and that's because Video.js will delegate appropriately. So for example, if we take a look at, let's go down to the prototype. Yeah, you have play and playback rate and pause and, and all of that stuff that we've already reviewed. So that means I could say video.play, and it'll work. And in this case, the audio is muted. I will pause that. All right, so cool. You already know some of the API. But there is one caveat to, to keep in mind. Remember in the last lesson where I said you could set the playback rate like this. But that's not going to work here. Let's try it. Video.play, turn the audio on, 
and then run that. Nope, it's just the regular rate. Okay, so I'm gonna give this a refresh. So as it turns out, with Video.js, all of those sorts of assignments where you are changing a property value, yeah, you have to use a method call for that instead. So I'm gonna hit up a few times to find my video. Then I will say playback rate and call it as a function or as a method. Okay, so now if I hit video.play again, yeah, you can see it's playing at 300%. Video.pause. So yeah, the same thing would be true for um, basically any property assignment. So if I wanted to change the current time equal to one, this is how you would do it with regular HTML5 video. So set that to one second, but it didn't work. Okay. In real life, you would have to call it as a method, but now it's not gonna work because I reassigned it up here. So let's give it a refresh, try it again, and then let's manually go up here. There we go. Okay, video.pause, video.currentTime is one second, and there you go. It has moved back accordingly. Okay, so already you know a lot here. You know how to play, pause, stop. We didn't cover it, but you know it's there. Uh, you learned about how to update the current time. You learned how to set the playback rate. And yeah, for anything else, just inspect the player object. So maybe you want to, I don't know, let's go to the prototype. Yeah, maybe you want to see uh, if you can set the controls or if the video can play a certain type. All of this stuff is available to you. It's a little overwhelming, but luckily you're only going to use 2% of all of this stuff in reality. So let's call it a day for this lesson. But in the next video, we're going to hook into events. So we're going to figure out, well, what if you want to perform an action when the pause button is pressed? Or when the video completes, you want to perform an action and maybe submit an Ajax request to your server and, and log the completion, very much like I would do at Laracast. All of that stuff is super easy, and um, you'll find out soon.